Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. It has now been just over 24 hours since reporting by the New York Times revealed a, that a flag championed by the far right Christian nationals movement, a flag displayed widely by January 6 insurrectionists as they stormed the Capitol for Donald Trump, also flew all summer long last year over the beach house of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito. And of course, that news about that flag came just days after we learned that Alito's home in Virginia also displayed an upside down American flag in the weeks after the violent sacking of the Capitol. Another symbol adopted and embraced by Trump's Stop the Seal supporters. In that case, Alito responded to questions from the Times with an emailed statement saying his wife, you know, the wife, hoisted that inverted flag in a dispute with their liberal neighbors. Why? He doesn't say. But in the days since news of this second right-wing flag broke, there has been no response from Alito, no response from the court or its Chief Justice John Roberts, who now faces a growing chorus of voices calling for him to appear before Congress and explain the conduct of the members of his court. That is in addition to calls for Alito, at a minimum, to recuse himself from two hugely consequential January 6th-related cases sitting before the Supreme Court over his explicit and obvious violations of regulations on judicial conduct. If Justice Alito does not recuse himself from the Trump immunity case and the Fisher January 6th case, he will do irreparable damage to the Supreme Court. He definitively needs to recuse himself. Well, of course, he should recuse himself from these cases. At a very minimum. He has to recuse himself. He should recuse himself from any Trump-related cases. Now, all this is happening on a day when the Supreme Court was open for business, handing down decisions on cases it heard this spring. It was possible they might even announce some action on one of those cases that people say Trump, uh, that Alito should recuse from. Donald Trump's, Trump's claim that he is immune from prosecution for his attempts to overturn the 2020 election. Now, that's a case that the high court has sat on for months. In fact, check this out. It has now been 164 days, nearly half a year, since special counsel Jack Smith asked the justices to weigh in immediately on Trump's immunity claims, saying, basically, look, I know the Supreme Court's going to want to weigh on this, and the American voting public has a right to know the outcome of Trump's case before the 2024 election. And the court rejected that request, and they waited. And they are slow walking their decision now. So here we are now, nearly half a later, year later. It's harder and harder to think that someone like Sam Alito, whose household flew flags supporting the insurrection over not one but two of his houses, is in any way qualified to be a person who makes judgments on these cases. The court did not announce a ruling today in the immunity case. Who knows when and if they ever will. But the 6-3 conservative majority, the same conservative majority that destroyed abortion rights and Dobbs, the majority that now boasts multiple members who have flagrantly violated basic judicial ethics, covering everything from undeclared gifts to obvious conflicts of interest to open politicking, all of which apply to all the federal judges below the Supreme Court, that majority threw open the floodgates for Republican-led racial gerrymandering schemes. Court conservatives this time sided with a re redistricting plan by South Carolina Republicans that pulled thousands of black voters out of a key battleground district. In a decision that was authored by Samuel Alito, the majority agreed with those Republicans. They weren't trying to disenfranchise voters of color. They were trying to disenfranchise Democrats. And whoopsie, most of them happen to be black. See how that works? It's a decision that will make it easier for Republicans to box out voters of color as long as they can argue their gerrymandering is based on political identity first and race second, a ruling that endangers the basic principle of one person, one vote, another act of right-wing steamrolling that is the apotheosis of what the Trump era has wrought. We keep learning more daily about just how unaccountable they are. When a justice like Sam Alito flies this pro-insurrectionist flag, right-wing flag, not once but twice over his homes, the same flag flown by billionaire Republican donor Leonard Leo, who not only handpicked Trump's Supreme Court nominees, but also Alito and Thomas, and then proceeded to give both of them hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts, or at least facilitate those, and trips in recent years. <laughs> They're all part of the same club. I'm just a judge. Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito didn't have to fly those flags. 
to be a true conservative friend of the Trumpist agenda. This is what sticks with me, right? Think about this. I mean, Sam Alito is one of the most powerful reactionaries in the country, arguably the most. His court opinions, speeches, media appearances, he could just do that. Why do you fly the flags? He had to go an extra step and advertise. Take that flag in his vacation home, right? It's a signal from Alito about who he thinks he answers to. He knows he's not supposed to do that. He knows any other judge would get in trouble. You can't do that. But he thinks he answers to no one. We'll see if he's right. At the minimum, it suggests a disturbing readiness to keep pushing past any boundaries, as the movement that Alito is clearly a member of looks to destroy the current American constitutional order.